Good morning. Good morning, church. Welcome to worship here at Oakland Presbyterian. We're so blessed to have all of you with us in worship and pray that you'll be blessed by your time here. Welcome to those of you who are joining us online. We're blessed to have you here by the miracle of technology and and pray that you'll be blessed as well. Um, Do let us know that you're watching online. Just kind of reach out with a phone call. Um, Let us know how we can better serve you and and, uh, glad to have you uh, with us for this worship service but you are part of our family of faith as well. Likewise, to those of you who are here this day, if this is your first time here, a special welcome. If you are returning from having been away for a while, traveling or uh, visiting family at the end of the summer, we're glad you're back. Uh, We have been having a busy summer. We wrapped up on Friday our VBS uh, program. That was a wonderful opportunity for uh, young people in our community and in our family of faith to hear about Jesus and how much Jesus loves them, and they have an invitation to come as well. This morning, we launched our new youth uh, service between the uh, services for uh, young people in our uh, family of faith. And in our community, if you know some young uh, worshipers, uh, they are welcome to come uh, right here on Sunday mornings between the services. And uh, as you may know, our preschool is kicking off their school year um, starting on Monday with the return of the teachers. Uh, So there are lots of things happening here in the life and ministry of the church. And we want you all to be aware of that. If you're not already in the uh, church app and checking out what's going on in the church, you'll want to get signed up for that. We can help you. I do use that extensively uh, for me to get to know you. I'm still new here, and it's wonderful to be able to uh, uh, know a little bit about um, our family of faith. Uh, There's also opportunities online to uh, give Uh, If you would like, you can use the offering box at the front of the sanctuary or off to the side, or you can give online. We are called uh, not just to come and worship God and give glory, but also to uh, be an offering of ourselves and of our time and our talents and our treasure. So we invite you to do that as well. Um, But now, let us uh, prepare to worship a holy God. Let us calm our bodies, settle our minds and our spirits. Let us enter into the presence of a holy God. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving, and into his courts with serve the Lord who creates and sustains us. Our faith is in the faithfulness of God. We worship the Lord who is our salvation. Let us now stand and continue to give glory to God with our song.
confident in God's love and compassion and forgiveness, let us offer our prayers of confession to him together then. Holy God, you promise us a life full of blessing, but we do not give you the glory. You incite us to hope, but we fall back into fear. You urge us to give freely, but we cling to what we have. You call us to watch for you, but we grow lazy and self-absorbed. Forgive us, increase our hope, enlarge our hearts, and keep us alert to the wonders you work in the world every day. For the sake of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Friends, God's mercy is from everlasting to everlasting. Hear the good news. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Thanks be to God. And now, having been reconciled to God, let us pass the peace to one another. The peace of Christ be with you.
Our youngest uh, worshipers are invited to come forward. We have children today. Miss Jessica is filling in for uh, Miss Becca, who is away. Good morning. Today's scripture passage is taken from the book of Hebrews, chapter 11, verses 1 through 13. Faith is confidence in what we hope for and assurance about what we do not see. This is what the ancients were commended for. By faith, we understand that the universe was formed at God's command so that what is seen was not made out of what was visible. By faith, Abel brought God a better offering than Cain did. By faith, he was commended as righteous when God spoke well of his offerings. And by faith, Abel still speaks even though he is dead. By faith, Enoch was taken from his life so that he did not experience death. He could not be found because God had taken him away. For before he was taken, he was commended as one who pleased God. <clears throat> and, <clears throat> excuse me. and without faith, impossible to please God because anyone who comes to him must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who earnestly seek him. By faith, Noah, when warned about things not yet seen, in holy fear, built an ark to save his family. By faith, he condemned the world and became heir of the righteousness that is keeping in with faith. By faith, Abraham, when called to go to a place he would later receive as his inheritance, obeyed and went even though he did not know where he was going. By faith, he made his home in the promised land like a stranger in a foreign country. He lived in tents, as did Isaac and Jacob, who were heirs with him of the same promise. For he was looking forward to the city with foundations, whose architect and builder is God. And by faith, even Sarah, who was past childbearing age, was enabled to bear children because she considered him faithful who had made the promise. And so from this one man, and he as God as dead, as good as dead, came descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky and as countless as the sand on the seashore. All these people were still living by faith when they died. They did not receive things promised. They only saw them and welcomed them from a distance, admitting that they were foreigners and strangers on the earth. This is the word of the Lord. from Hebrews is yet one of several passages that we will consider today uh, on a topic of faith. We are beginning uh, this morning a short series on the Christian life, and today we will talk about keeping it simple, faith in Christ. Next week, we're going to talk about keeping it real, which is about the lives that we lead as Christians, and then we'll wrap it up uh, two weeks from now uh, with uh, keeping it together about unity in Christ. And I hope that you'll continue to uh, be with us during the series as we grow and grow together as Christ's disciples. This morning, as we uh, hear, this is a, a series um, that begins with faith. And we talk uh, initially about the kind of faith that uh, people in an earlier day might have had. Looking back to the 1920s right now, 
uh, remembering those people who were pilots who flew for the Postal Service a hundred years ago and remembering how dangerous their jobs were. They were flying planes that had uh, what we might call a primitive design without the kind of navigational equipment that we take for granted today, flying out of and into unlit fields and without the ability to communicate with the ground crews about what the local weather that they were flying into. Three out of four, 75% of the first pilots that flew uh, for the Postal Service, there was over 30 of them had crashes and died in those plane crashes, earning the planes that they were flying the well-deserved title of a flaming coffin. And even under the best of conditions, pilots a hundred years ago, well, that was a, just a dangerous job in general because if you think about it, without instruments, they were relying on human perception. We know that human perception is subject to fatigue and mental and physical distractions and a lack of perception sometimes because of optical illusions or vertigo. Pilots today, thankfully, are flying much better designed planes and they have all of the navigational equipment that they need to fly safely in all kinds of conditions. And they are taught to rely on that navigational equipment, taught to trust it instead of trusting their own flawed human perceptions. Now we might also say that Living in general is a dangerous job. We just don't have the equipment that we need to uh, deal with all of the circumstances that life throws at us from time to time. We're always at risk of going down in flames, even under the best conditions where we are blessed to have uh, parents and other family who care for us and nurture us, where we have good health and we have financial resources, wealth. Even with all of the best of those circumstances, there's no guarantees in this life because as humans, we are flawed and we follow our flaws to our ruin. Having faith is like having the best plane available with all of the navigational equipment that we might need to, to navigate life's storms. If, if we will accept the gift of that faith, if we will learn to use it as disciples, if we will trust it instead of our flawed selves. Living by faith, like flying a plane by instruments, is just safer. We're more likely to make it to our final destination than we are to the scene of the crash. And so we take up this idea of what faith is and the fact that faith is a gift for us. We read the letter to the Ephesians that the Apostle Paul sent talking about this topic, Ephesians 2, verses 8 through 9. For it is by grace you have been saved through faith, and this not from yourselves. It is the gift of God, not by works, so that no one can boast. Faith is the gift of God. We can't wishful thinking ourselves to faith. We can't yearn for it, hope that it might just be ours. We can't learn our way to faith either, can't yearn for it, can't learn our way to it. We can't, for example, just read the Bible cover to cover and think that all of a sudden we have faith. I can tell you I read the Bible first as an adult 
in a Bible as literature class in a secular university, it doesn't automatically yield faith. So we can't yearn for it, we can't learn our way towards it, and we can't earn our faith either, as Paul points out. We can't do it by works. We can't just go out and do enough good stuff and then expect that we're going to get a certificate of appreciation or a, a, a ribbon for everything that we have done. Faith is a gift not unlike other gifts, not unlike any other gift, which originates with someone who is the giver, who through affection or charitable intention extends something, gives something to another person with no expectation of receiving anything in return. And our job as the people who receive that gift is to accept it, not unlike any other gift. You open it up and you say, wow, just what I needed, or I've always wanted that. And so you put it on, or you eat it, or you cash it, or you play with it. And the same thing is true when God extends a gift of faith to us. God says, here, have some faith. And we say, yes, thank you, I will. And how do we do that? Well, to keep it simple, follow our ABCs on this. We admit that we are sinners. We believe that Jesus came to save. And we confess our faith. Paul tells us what it means to admit that we are sinners. Paul writes to Timothy, 1 Timothy 1, Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners, of whom, Paul says, I am the worst. Paul always had a habit of boasting about everything, including being the worst of every sinner. Very dramatic of him. We just have to acknowledge our need for a savior and say, I can't do it on my own, God. I admit and acknowledge that I am a sinner. And then believe that Jesus saves. And here a text like John 3.16, that familiar and well-beloved verse, for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son to whoever would believe in him shall not perish but have eternal life. To believe that Jesus came as us to be with us, for us, and to die for our sake and in our place at the cross. So we admit, we believe, and then we confess that faith. Romans 10, Paul writing again, If you confess with your mouth Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Paul spelling it out for that early church at Rome, writing ahead of his visit, letting them know about what it means to be a disciple, to, to accept God's gift of faith. And so that's a little bit about how we view faith, faith as a gift. But what does it mean to put our faith in action? What does it mean for us to actually live as if we have made Jesus Lord of our lives? We say it, we confess that, but what does that really mean? How do we put our trust in it like those pilots did back in their day? When we think about what faith is for us, and faith, as we come now to the passage that Rosanna read from Hebrews, faith is that which makes real and tangible the things of God that are neither present nor visible. It makes real and tangible those things that are not 
real and tangible that aren't present, that we can't see or step on or smell or hear. Hebrews 11.1, 1, Now faith is being sure of what we hope for and certain of what we do not see. Being sure of what we hope for and certain of what we do not see. 20 years ago this week, it's hard to believe it's already been 20 years, but if you, like uh, we are in our house, watching Olympic pageantry, you may remember that it was the night of the opening ceremonies 20 years ago when we had an uninvited guest, which was Hurricane Charlie. And Hurricane Charlie went right over the roof of the Ruta household. We hoped that we were safe. We had hope that we were safe. Not something that's tangible or real. Hope in our hearts for that. And we were pretty sure that we were going to be safe because the house was built on a foundation. We had a foundation under us and we were attached to it. If we were living in manufactured housing, we might not have felt so sure about that. And if we look at the Greek that we translate here about being sure of what we hope for, we find that, yes, it actually means something that is under or supports, like a foundation supports a house. And so faith for us as Christians is like a house that's built on a foundation. It gives you that hope of being safe, that sureness in your heart. So being sure of what we hope for and certain of what we can't see. Thankfully, the roof stayed on, but we did take some tree damage, and so we had a visit from another person, which was the insurance adjuster, come out to see how much damage. And during that conversation, statements made, it's our house, and yes, it's insured, Statements about which we put our trust. These are, these are proof in the written document, the deed, wherever that might have been. I'm not sure if we knew at that moment where the deed was or where the insurance policy might be. But that was the proof, the evidence that we were the owner and that it was properly insured. And as I warned the 845 service, if you don't own the house or you don't have insurance, don't tell people that you do because that's bad and you're going to get in trouble when they find out that you really don't have those things. But we have, as homeowners, we had proof with the certificate of insurance and the deed to the house. And again, when we look at the Greek that we translate here of the, what it means to be certain... It's evidence or proof of something that convicts. And so faith for us as Christians is what the deed to the house is or the proof of the insurance policy. Again, faith is that what makes real and tangible the things that aren't present and that we can't see. They're not visible. The ancients, those people who were the heroes of the faith that Rosanna read about, the people who reside in the faith hall of fame of chapter 11 of Hebrews, those ancients were commended for living by faith. Abel and Enoch and Noah and Abram and Sarai and on the list goes Heroes who didn't fly by visual reference like the pilots of the 1920s who flew for the postal service. They weren't flying by visual reference, nor were they just flying by instruments like pilots do in our day. They were truly flying by faith. They lived and died whole lifetimes 
trusting in the promise that God had made that one day in the fullness of time, a Messiah would come. And they had faith that God's word was true. They put their trust in it, in that Messiah who would come in the fullness of time, even if Messiah didn't come in their time. Those heroes of the faith didn't live lives that were perfect. They crashed and burned from time to time based on the decisions that they made that weren't right. They had lives, though, that were ultimately marked by obedience and endurance. They were all in for Jesus before Jesus was even a thing. That's the kind of faith that this passage talks about. And we can have that kind of faith too. We can have that kind of faith. The kind of faith that that is more than just giving all that we know of ourselves. You say, okay, I'm going to give all that I know about myself to all that I can know about Jesus. Or we can give all that we don't know about ourselves, about all that we don't know about Jesus. The kind of life where if you had told me 20 years ago I would be standing here and doing this, I was, uh, I don't think so, but I had faith and put faith in a Savior who I had turned my life over to And here we are, all the things that we don't know about ourselves, all the things that we don't know about Jesus. And so the question that we have today is where are we on our walk of faith, this journey that we are on? Are we just starting? Some of you, maybe some of you who are are watching and worshiping with us this morning, Wondering what it is to have a life of faith at the ABC stage and taking that first step. Today is the day to do it. Or if we continue the metaphor of of flying here, are we people who have said, I'm willing to give all that I know about myself, all that I can know about Jesus and kind of play it safe. I'm sitting on the tarmac just idling, waiting to take off, but not really wanting to go anywhere with it. Or... Are we ready to really soar, to get up there and fly by faith with God? As we come to the Lord in prayer this day, we are mindful of the prayer concerns here of our own family of faith and those of folks who are joining us with their uh, online services. And uh, certainly I want to lift up those who are ill um, and uh, pray for healing uh, for them. Uh, Pray for those um, who are in need of uh, special um, encouragement 
and inspiration, all of the concerns that we have of our heart. We keep in our hearts, especially this day, all of those young people uh, who have been uh, with us all last week uh, with VBS, that the seeds of uh, Jesus' love that has been planted in their hearts would continue to take root and that it would grow and flourish and eventually fruit itself. Uh, the needs of our uh, youth, of our church, as they begin a new journey uh, this morning, and also all of those uh, children and teachers who are coming back for our uh, preschool. Let us uh, include all of them in our prayers this day. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. You who taught us to pray and promise that we would receive all that we ask in Jesus' name, we pray now in his name. Lord, we pray for the young people in our family of faith and the families uh, who have entrusted their children uh, to us as we raise and help them raise up the next generation of believers to be disciples, to know what it means to put your faith and trust in Jesus Christ and to live the abundant lives that he calls us to live, not lives of fear or darkness or disappointment, but lives of abundance, lives following the path that he lays out for us and not the ones that we choose for ourselves. We pray for those who volunteered last week. We pray for those who are part of our youth ministry here, the volunteers and staff. And we pray for the teachers uh, who are coming back tomorrow for our preschool and for all the families of the students who are preparing to start a new school year. Thank you, Lord, for the many gifts that they bring and the resources that we're able to provide for them so that those children can have a safe and loving environment to learn more about you as they grow. Lord, we pray for this church, for the mission and ministry here that you have called us to, for the ways in which we do not yet know how it is that you will call us, and yet we move forward by faith as the saints of previous generations did who came to this area, saw the need to have a church, raised the beautiful sanctuary that we worship in this day. Lord, help us to see ourselves as those who are now blessed to be a blessing to next generations and newcomers. Help us all also in the meantime to be hands and feet and salt and light to a community filled with people who need a word of hope or encouragement, who need us to provide for them, whether that is food or a safe place to live, who need us to be praying for them, to see them for who they are, not as our enemies, not as people that we are fearful of, but as children created in your image, brothers and sisters, people who we have the privilege of serving sacrificially as Jesus served and loved us. Lord, we pray for our local community and we pray for communities that are in the path of storms this day as we remember storms that you safely brought us through in the past. You, you who always protect and provide, we pray that you would protect and provide all who are in harm's way now. Not just from natural disasters or storms, but people who are in the path of personal gain and striving for power, people who would oppress, people who would make war, do violence, perpetrate injustice, and oppress others. Lord, we pray that you would guide those leaders and individuals to follow after you, that your Holy Spirit would guide them to provide 
instead of persecute or to oppress. Lord, we pray for those today who are bereaved, who are grieving, those who are lonely, those who are anxious, all who need your healing touch to be on them. We pray for the special needs of those who are on our own hearts. Even as we lift up those whose names we don't know, Lord, we pray this day, as we do every day, the prayer you taught us, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. In the spirit of this being back to school time, we've mentioned several times throughout this service some of the uh, mission and ministry of the church that affects our our youngest uh, uh, members and uh, young people in our community. And I would challenge you to do what those volunteers who stepped up last week to ensure that we had VBS when we weren't sure we were going to be able to do it. Thank you for all of them. But also to challenge everyone in this congregation if we are to grow and flourish, that we need to support our children's ministry, our youth ministries, and the ministry of the preschool here. And so I challenge you, if you are not already aware of these ministries, to find out, get with Becca or Russell on how you can help with the children of the youth, and especially to be praying, um, if you are not already, uh, for the teachers uh, who are coming back to the preschool we have among the teachers who were there almost a hundred years of experience between those ladies. Those are some talented, dedicated, loving women who are caring for our tiniest humans here on this church property. And we should be praying and celebrating them um, as they come back this week and praying also for all of the families of those children. Um, so I look forward to other opportunities to call on you folks to support those ministries, but now I challenge you in this call to serve to be more aware of these ministries of the church and be praying for them and to find out other ways that you can help uh, support. And as we do so, let us stand and uh, conclude with our closing hymn.
as you go from this place, go with the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and in the fellowship of the Holy Spirit may be with you this day and every day and forevermore. Amen.